All right, hello, welcome back. Uh, 5.2 notes. Uh, we are talking now about probability rules. Uh, what are some the rules for probability spaces? Um, what you know? What are probabilities? Uh, so we have to define some things first. First thing we have to define is the sample space S. Uh, we call that a capital S. This is the set of all outcomes um, that could occur. All the, the ways that something could happen. Um, so what is the sample space for flipping two coins? You know, what are the outcomes? You flip two coins. What are the ways that flipping two coins could turn out for you? Well, you could get two heads. You could get a head and a tail. You could get a tail and a head. Or you could get a tail and a tail. What are the ways that something could turn out? Um, what's the first outcome? What's the second outcome? Great. Um, so we have sample spaces. Those are those, you know, all the things that could happen. Sometimes we're going to represent those visually with Venn, Venn diagrams like we will in a moment. Uh, so often we're going to talk about probability models. We're going to talk about rolling dice all the time. Uh, so a pro, uh, rolling a die gives us a prob simple probability model, which gives us the sample space, all the possible outcomes, and a probability for each outcome. So a probability model gives those, those two things, the outcomes and the probability of each. Um, a couple rules for probability models. What do all have the probabilities have to add up to? The sum of all those probabilities um, has got to be one, right? The probability, that is the probability of something in the sample space happening is one. Something's going to happen. What does each probability have to be between? Uh, all those PIs, all those individual probabilities have to be between zero and one. We might also say PI is an element of the interval from zero to one, uh, you know, for all I. Great. They have to be between zero and one, and they have to add up to one. I hope that isn't too surprising to you. So we're going to talk about probabilities. We're going to talk about probabilities of events. What are we going to have? These events is going to be a collection of outcomes, and it's usually going to be designated by capital letters. We're going to use a capital letter to represent some event. And so if uh, we might have event A, the die roll is odd. Uh, and so what is that? And the sample space, uh, if the sample space here is, uh, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the outcomes, then this thing within here might be A, the event uh, being odd. So uh, how do we write this thing? We write, uh, we write it with capital letters. Probability uh, die roll is odd. We can do it in words or we can do it in letters if we have already defined that event with a capital letter. We happen to know it's three out of six or one half or 0.5. So uh, we're going to talk about probability rules. We've already written some of this for normal uh, probability events, normally distributed events, uh, but we can uh, write these for more general events, things that come from coin flipping or wheel spinning or things of that nature. So we can uh, do some probability rules. Again, those basic rules of probability written a little more formally for any event A. The probability of A is between zero and one. You need to know that. Uh, the probability of something happening is one. The sample space is all outcomes. So something's got to happen. And in the case of equally likely outcomes, then you have your general uh, probability rule, which says the probability of something happening, A, is the number of events that are A, divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So um, some notation. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, events and sample spaces kind of visually with areas, and you're gonna use um, some, well, Venn diagrams uh, for these. Um, so the intersection is the set of, uh, a and B, that's, that's this stuff in here. That's the area they have uh, in common, intersection, is what they have in common. Um, over, while over here, we have this larger A union B, 
uh, this is over here, the union. What is a union? You need to put them together. The union is A or B or both. Uh, sometimes we talk about this as an or. It's an inclusive or. That means, you know, do you want, you want a hamburger or a hot dog? Yes, I want both. You can have both. Um, and that's the thing you're not going to think about with or. That's a new thing for the part of the mathematical or. So union, put them together, A or B or both. Uh, and the other type, uh, the other thing we have here is what's uh, called the complement. You've got complementary angles, but you've also got complementary probabilities. Um, so more generally, we can say either the probability of A or the probability of A not happening is one. So this is A, you might call this A complement or not A. When you put that little C up there, it means the thing didn't happen. So you either have got A or you've got A, a complement, uh, a, a complement. Sometimes we use a apostrophe of the complement. What's the idea? Well, if A happens or A doesn't happen, one of those is going to happen. So if I want to find the probability of A not happening, I do one minus the probability of A happening. Um, sometimes it's easier to find the probability of something not happening. And that's what the complement does. Uh, the complement is, uh, is like not. The complement is it didn't happen. No. Uh, so we've got some basic rules here and we can represent these things with Venn diagrams. We can talk about what they have in common. We can talk about putting them together. We can talk about a complement, the not part of it. And the other thing we can talk about is mutually exclusive. What does mutually exclusive mean? They cannot occur at the same time. Uh, what does that look like visually? If they're, they're mutually exclusive, then you see they have no overlap. If they're mutually exclusive, they have overlap, no overlap. If they're not mutually exclusive, if they're not mutually exclusive, then they can both happen. There's outcomes where they both happen. Um, so mutual exclusivity, you can see them with um, Venn diagrams uh, and they look, well, there's nothing in common. They didn't ever both happen. Uh, cannot occur at the same time, no outcomes in common. Um, so you can see examples with playing cards. What does that look like? The probability of A and B is zero. If you see that, that is an implication of A and B are mutually exclusive. If A and B are mutually exclusive, then you can write that the probability of A and B happening is zero. So we can talk about mutual exclusivity. We can talk about complements. We can talk about intersections. We can talk about unions. I know what probabilities have got to be between. I know what probabilities have to add up to. So I know a lot about probabilities now. Um, and we can do some problems with these probabilities. I got one more uh, rule for you, which is something called this general addition rule. If two events, uh, A or B, and I want to know the probability of A or B, then I've got the probability of A plus the probability of B minus this intersection. You may, might say, why are we subtracting? A, B. Think about this. If you count everything in A and you count everything in B, what we don't want to do here is we don't want to count these folks in the middle twice. What does that subtraction do? That subtraction prevents double counting. And you draw a little picture of that for yourself. Uh, the idea is we're going to find the probability of A plus the probability of B, and we're going to subtract the intersection. This is on your formula sheet.
So we can find uh, 5.2 here. We can find some simple probabilities if we're given a probability model. And part A says show that this is a legitimate probability model. There's two things we got to check. We got to check that the sum of the probabilities is one. So I got to check, you know, is 0.236 plus 0.186 plus 0.252 plus 0.192 plus 0.134. Is that indeed one? Yes, it is. And you need to say that um, all those probabilities are between zero and one. We're just going to check that. It's trivial to check. You can see that it is true. Find the probability that a chosen student scored three or better. So that's probability x greater than or equal to three. That would be the probability that x is three plus the probability that x is four plus the probability that x is five. Add these three together. I don't know what we get. You can do it, 0 0.252, 0 0.192, 0 0.134. Let's put 0.134 in there, and we get an answer, 0 0.578. And then we're asked here at the end for C, find the probability that the chosen student didn't get a one. Well, the probability they didn't get a one is one minus the probability they did get a one. That's the complement rule. The probability of A not happening is one minus the probability of A happening. So I could add up two, three, four, five, but it'd be a lot easier to just subtract away 0.236 to get an answer of 0.764. Um, so that is a didn't get a one, that is a complement. So we can find probabilities. We can add these things up. Um, let's do a more complicated one involving, uh, I think, some cell phones here. And then I'm going to leave the uh, high school graduates as an example for you um, on the next page. So according to National Center for Health Stats, great. Um, in December 2012, uh, great, this is timely, right? 60% uh, of US households had a landline, 89 had cell phones, 51 had both. Okay, those add up to over 100%, so there's oh, some in commons there. So, all right, so we're gonna make a two-way table that displays the sample space. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make this little two-way table. All right, and what are we gonna have here? We're gonna have landline, yes and no. We're gonna have cell phone, yes and no. And we'll have some totals on the margins. Now, the, the question might be, where do I start? And I would say that you need to start with the both people. Uh, you know who those both people are. That's 0 0.51 had both. Okay, what else do you know? 60% had a landline. Well, is that yes, landline, no cell phone? Yes, line, landline, yes, cell phone? Oh, that's, that's just yes overall. So I need to put a 0.60 said yes, they have a landline. We don't know what else they said, but 60% of people said yes, they had a landline. And 89% of people had a cell phone. 89% of people said yes, cell phone. 0.89. There's one other number that I can tell you on here. Hopefully it's obvious to you, but these are all, these are going to add up to one, right? So we can do some math to go back and figure out what every other number is. Um, uh, if 50, you know, there's 89 total here. So what's that going to be? This has got to be 0.38. There's 50, 60 total uh, said uh, they had a landline and 51 are accounted for. So we got to account for nine more. So if 60% of people do have a landline, 40% of people don't. If 89% of people do have a cell phone, 11% of people don't. And we can figure out these no, no, they got no phone at all. That's 2% of folks. Um, so. 
we have made our two-way table. Uh, I have used some colors to help you figure out what numbers I got from the text and the rest I got through subtraction. Part B asks us to find the probability they have at least one of two types. So the probability of at least one, write this down with me, this is a big idea, is one minus the probability of none. Uh, you're going to see this over and over and over. This is not the first time I'm going to write it down. This is not the first time I'm going to highlight it. Uh, but, you know, or excuse me, the last time you need that. The probability at least one is one minus the probability of none. So that becomes here one minus who didn't have a cell phone at all. The people who didn't have a cell phone at all. That's 0.02. One minus 0 0.02. The probability we have at least one type of cell phone or one type of phone is 98%. Excuse me, that's, that's part B. That's A. That's B. Okay. Uh, part C, what's the probability they have neither type of phone? Well, the, uh, we already found that. Uh, that's the probability uh, no cell and no land. Uh, we, we see that that's uh, 0 0.02. It's, we found that in part part B. Find the probability has a cell phone only. So that would be probability yes, cell, and no land. Uh, who had a cell phone but not a landline? I'm going to use pink. Um, yes, cell, no land. Uh, yes, cell, no land. That's... 0.38. Cool. Uh, so when you're making these two-way tables, start with the and. Um, start with the intersection. The intersection here was the both. Uh, if you start with the intersection and work out, uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, on the back page, you've got another very similar example. Um, Two-way table uh, with um, high schoolers. I'm going to pause and look at the key only to talk about um, specifically part E. So let's pause for a moment. Again, for the sake of time, um, go through and uh, make sure that you match up with the key on this one. Uh, I won't, mostly want to talk about E. Are they mutually exclusive? Did they both happen? Was somebody a high school grad and a homeowner? Yeah, they, they can both happen. They are not mutually exclusive because they can occur simultaneously. Specifically, it happened for these 221 folks. Excuse me. Uh, part... Uh, or the last thing in your in your notes here, what's the probability that at least one ATM is working? You add the one, two, and three probabilities together, you get 0.85, or you'd have done one minus the probability that none are open, one minus 0.15 to get you 0.85. Either way gets you there uh, correctly, uh, one way is a little bit quicker. So you've got the introduction of probability rules here. Um, next time 5.3, it's, it's, it's probably a two lecture or two day lecture, I don't know that I get all the way through it in one day, um, we will. We will just see. We'll see you then.